All right, guys, here is a review um, of how to write a counter argument. Now, I'm going to go pretty fast, but remember that you can always pause the video and look at what I'm doing for each step and then kind of imitate it for your own counter argument. You can make your own counter argument paragraph, or you could even make like a counter argument smaller statement in each of your body paragraphs. It's your choice. I'm going to show you today how to write an entire counter argument paragraph. So I want to think of, I want you to think of this paragraph in four pieces. Okay. It's not Tika Ika, just kind of four parts. First, you want to introduce the opposing argument. Some of your opposition might actually have multiple reasons why they dislike it or why they disagree with your position, but you should really focus on one main thing. So there's a lot of different ways that you could start, but you can consider using some of these phrases. Some may argue, others may say the opposition claims that, right? I'm going to delete that. Okay, then you want some sort of evidence, could be a statistic, could be a fact, could even just be like a, a quote with someone's opinion that you found. All right, so make sure you introduce the evidence, then you have some evidence, then you want to refute that, meaning you either show why it's valid or you say, hey, this is valid, but it's not important enough to change my mind, right? Um, then you can defend your position or you could even offer like a solution or a compromise. So first, I'm going to introduce the opposing argument, just kind of put it in my own words. All right, and, and since remember my argument is video games should not be banned, well, we all know parents or teachers or anybody that might say, look, violent video games, you play them all the time. Video games like Fortnite or Call of Duty where you're killing other people, that can't be good for you. That's gonna make you, you know, it's gonna make you tend to think in a more violent way, right? So think about how you might introduce the opinion of people who disagree with you. So I'm gonna start like this. Well, many feel that violent video games are perfectly safe. Others argue that we should not underestimate their ability to shape the thoughts of young children who are easily influenced. Let me fix my spelling errors here. If you hear some weird noise in the background, that's my dog chewing on his chew toy. Okay, let's read that. While many feel that violent video games are perfectly safe, others argue that we should not underestimate their ability to shape the thoughts of young children who are easily influenced. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my handy evidence document I've been using for this entire paper. Here's all my quotes that I used to support my position. But down here, I have a couple quotes that show the opposing point of view. I'm just going to focus on this one right now. Let me read this one to you. I got this from USA Today, which is a really well-known news organization. Okay, the article was titled, Study Confirms Link Between Violent Video Games and Physical Aggression. Author Mike Snyder. So Mike wrote this, the analysis of 24 studies from countries, including the US, Canada, Germany, and Japan, found those who played violent video games such as Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, and Manhunt were more likely to exhibit behavior such as being sent to the principal's office for fighting or hitting a non-family member. Ooh, that sounds really bad, right? I'm going to use that and then kind of show why it's not as bad as it, may, as it seems. So I'm going to copy this quote. I'm going to go back to my evidence down here, paste it. Right, don't forget your citation, get rid of that period, author's last name, and page number. Don't need a page number because it's an online article that has no page numbers. Okay, now I need to introduce the evidence, right? So my go-to is I use like the, the author's last name and then maybe say either the article title or I'll say the, the website, right, or the organization USA Today. Well, this article title is really long, so I'm just going to stick with the organization. So I'm going to say um, Mike Snyder of USA Today writes that comma. Really simple. Um, just remember that magazines, websites, organizations, they're not in quote marks like article titles. They're actually italicized. You click that I up there to make it italicized. Okay, so Mike Snyder of USA Today writes that the analysis of 24 studies, blah, blah, blah. Perfect. 
Okay, now here's where it gets really long, right? I need to refute his position, explain my own position, maybe offer a solution. This last part, offer a solution or compromise, that's optional, but I'm going to do it here to show you what it looks like. So just don't get worried by the length of mine. Yours doesn't have to be this length necessarily. Okay, I'm going to start by talking about why I think the statistic isn't quite what it seems. This statistic, oh, I'm in a weird font here. This statistic seems troubling, but it doesn't show the whole picture. Okay, now I'm going to go back to what we did in my body paragraph video where we were talking about that guy who did the research study about violent video games. So I'm actually going to refer back to my previous evidence from my body paragraph number one. Like Camp's research showed, video games are not the only influence in the lives of these children. Even more, remember, use lots and lots of transition words. It connects your ideas and it makes your writing flow. So even more is a transition word. Even more, this viewpoint has been rejected by the Supreme Court of the United States. Now, this is a really cool fact that I found in another article, actually in USA Today, the same article. So I'm going up to my supporting evidence and I'm using another quote to disprove the fact. Now you don't necessarily need a second quote. I just think that it's really powerful and it helped me disprove it. But sometimes you can just disprove it with your own explanation. So up to you. All right, so I read that in 2011, the Supreme Court um, had this case where they were asked to ban the sale of violent video games to minors, right? Everyone under the age of 18. But then Justice Antonin Scalia, he dismissed it and basically said, these studies haven't proved that video games cause people to be violent, right? So I'm going to use that quote, and I'm going to copy and paste it over. So I'm going to start with the first one right here. Let's see. So I'm actually going to break this quote in two so that it makes more sense. So I'm going to do just the first one right here. All right, and I'm going to write, Snyder writes, right, just a simple introduction of the quote, in a 2011 Supreme Court decision overturning California's ban on the sale of violent video games to minors, the late Justice Anton Scalia dismissed a link between the games and aggression, right? Quote, Snyder, that's my citation. I'm going to introduce the second part of the quote. In his opinion, Justice Scalia argued, now I'm going to actually include what he wrote, the Justice Scalia wrote in his opinion. Here we go. He argued that these studies have been rejected by every court to consider them and with good reason. They do not prove that violent video games cause minors to act aggressively. So that's a pretty powerful response to that statistic about kids acting more violently in school when they play video games. Okay, put my citation there. I'm just going to explain and offer a solution. So here's my solution. Instead of focusing on banning video games, parents and authority figures should learn to teach their children to balance the amount of time they spend playing video games with the time they spend on other activities. So basically, I'm not saying you're stupid. I'm trying to compromise. And I'm saying like, hey, maybe the problem isn't the video games. Maybe it's just finding a balance, right? Anything in excess can be harmful, can be damaging. So here I have introducing the argument of the opposition, using a little piece of evidence to show what the opposition thinks, and then defending my position. There you go. Hopefully that helps you write your own counter argument.